So all right. we all know Squidward J. Tentacles, uh -huh. famous for his big nose, array of artistic abilities, and overall negative attitude. And what could be better than serving up smiles? Being dead. In the show, he works with and lives next to the main character of the show, SpongeBob SquarePants. And the relationship between these two characters is very interesting. There are small moments throughout the show where they seem to genuinely get along. However, for the majority of the series, they do not like each other. Who shuts your half wit pie holes? Well, let me correct myself. SpongeBob does see Squidward as a friend. But Squidward is constantly being annoyed by Spongebob antics. <coughs> Seeing how annoyed Squidward gets at Spongebob, you may be wondering, why doesn't Squidward quit his job, sell his house, and yeah, move seriously. as far away as he can seriously. from Spongebob? Well, in simple terms, he can't. Because Spongebob's family is actually paying Squidward to look after Spongebob. It's time to grab some what? popcorn and strap yourselves in. Because this theory is going to be a wild ride. What? <laughs> so the main question you may be wondering is, why would Squidward need to look after SpongeBob? Well, for many years, people have speculated that SpongeBob Bro, may- Bro, I'm laughing, but low key? It, could, it makes sense, you know? So let's see, let's see. have a form do. of autism and was for a long time living under the care of his family. That is, until his parents thought it would be a good idea for Spongebob to live on his own, so he can be more independent. They bought him a brand new house and hired Squidward, the next door neighbour at the time, to watch over Spongebob and make sure he's doing okay. And yeah, this sounds like a cool theory, but where's the proof? Well, let's start with the most important part of this theory, the idea that Spongebob has autism. When you begin to examine SpongeBob's behavior, it does seem plausible that SpongeBob yeah. may have autism. This is a list of autistic traits that people claim SpongeBob exhibits. But before we continue, I just want to acknowledge that this list doesn't represent all autistic people, as autism is a wide spectrum and people with autism express themselves in various ways. That being said, let's investigate the claim that SpongeBob is autistic. One of the most obvious traits that SpongeBob displays is his inability to read social cues. Mm -hmm. Throughout the show, SpongeBob isn't really good at recognizing people's emotions. He doesn't understand that he annoys Squidward, nor does he realize when Squidward gets angry at him. SpongeBob also struggles to control his emotions, which is another trait of autism. Damn, he dude. often becomes upset about very small things and can become overly frightened by small things too. You know, SpongeBob kinda, also obvious, seems to take things very like, literally, really not understanding like this, you know? metaphorical language. For example, in the episode Squid on Strike, Squidward tells SpongeBob that he wants to which SpongeBob takes literally as he begins to destroy the Krusty Krab. Many autistic people Bro, also have a special interest, which is basically an area of their life that they feel extremely passionate for. In SpongeBob's case, mm -hmm. that's fry cooking, a job which many people would hate to do, but SpongeBob seems overly fixated on, even becoming upset when he's unable to flip those juicy patties. So, as you can see by this list, Spongebob yeah. exhibits various traits of autism. However, if you're still not convinced that Spongebob may be autistic, the voice of Spongebob himself, Tom Kenny, says that Spongebob is in fact, a little bit autistic. I mean, it makes sense. But yeah, why Squidward? So, now that we've established that Spongebob is autistic, we need to figure out why Squidward was chosen to look after Spongebob, and why he even agreed to it. Because mm -hmm. I mean, he obviously hates being around Spongebob. Well, it's a long story. A really long story. So long, in fact, that it begins in prehistoric times. In the episode, Bug, we see primitive versions of Spongebob, Squidward, and Patrick getting up to nautical nonsense. This mostly focuses around them discovering fire. The episode is really important, as it shows that Spongebob and Squidward's family have known each other for a very long time. But this isn't the only time we see Spongebob and Squidward's family interact throughout time. In the episode Dunces and Dragons, we see their families interacting in medieval times. And in the episode Pest oh, of the West, shit. we see their families interacting once again back in the wild wild west. 
So it's safe to assume that with such a long history, yeah, the two families okay. would be extremely close. Meaning Squidward most definitely knows Spongebob's family and might even feel an obligation to help them look after Spongebob. But now you may be wondering, Dude. why don't we see Squidward interact with Spongebob's family in the show if he's helping them? Well, we actually do, but it's not as obvious as you think. What if they're like all related? That would be a crazy theory to think about, like Squidward's like his cousin or some shit. Yeah, in the no, episode Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout, we see Squidward and Spongebob's parents attend a party for Spongebob, so we definitely know they've interacted. In the mm. episode Grandma's Kisses, it is revealed that Squidward even knows the location of Spongebob's grandma's house as he listens in on their conversation. But the best proof doesn't come from the TV show, but a comic strip titled Great Grandma, released by Nickelodeon. In the comic, Spongebob invites the Squidward comics, to man. visit his grandma's house, when Squidward replies that he will come if she doesn't play any of her corny music. How does Squidward know what type of music Spongebob's grandma plays if he hasn't visited her before? Makes Later sense. in the comic, Squidward ends up visiting Spongebob's grandma and even states that he wants to visit her again without Spongebob because they both share the same interests and get Yo, along very well. So Squidward. Squidward, what's going on, bro? Huh? Spongebob's grandma, really? Huh? So, okay, there is I solid evidence that Squidward and Spongebob's family have definitely interacted in some way <laughs> or another. However, there doesn't seem to be enough evidence to prove that they have talked specifically about looking after Spongebob. But the lack of evidence may be evidence itself. So if it's true that Spongebob's parents hired Squidward to look after Spongebob, they wouldn't want Spongebob knowing. Bro, hang on, I got a theory. He agreed to take care of Spongebob so he could get closer to his grandma. That's it. Theory debunked. Because the whole point of it is to make Spongebob feel independent. And since the show is based on Spongebob's perspective, it would make sense that we don't see much evidence of this happening in the show, as it's trying to be hidden from Spongebob. The agreement. So now that we've established that Squidward and Spongebob's parents are working together, we now have to figure out why Squidward even agrees to look after Spongebob. I mean, if he hates Spongebob so much, why doesn't he quit his job, sell his house and move as far away as he can from Spongebob? We've seen Squidward's house get demolished many times throughout the show. However, he continues to rebuild his house in the same spot yeah. every time, next to Spongebob. Wouldn't it be much cheaper and better for Squidward's mental health to rebuild his house somewhere else? Yes, we've established that he's been hired by Spongebob's parents to look after Spongebob, but seeing the pain Squidward suffers being mm -hmm. around Spongebob, why does he even agree to it? Tell it's me, clear it's that something is keeping Squidward near Spongebob, and by something, I Bro, mean money. what the, In the show it is revealed that Spongebob's parents are actually quite rich. For example, in the episode No Free Ride, we see Spongebob's parents give Spongebob a brand new boatmobile as a gift. So if Spongebob's parents yeah, have Spongebob a lot of money, are loaded, it's not they? impossible that they are paying Squidward to look after Spongebob. Both Squidward and Spongebob work at the Krusty Krab, and as we see throughout the show, Mr. Krabs is extremely greedy and likes to pay his employees the bare minimum. I don't pay you to breathe. You hardly pay us at all. Receiving barely any money from Mr. Krabs, you may be wondering how Spongebob and Squidward can even afford to live. They both have nice houses, lots of furniture, and endless amounts of food. It would make sense that Spongebob's parents are giving them yeah. both money to support themselves. This would also explain why Squidward does the bare minimum at work, because most of his money comes from looking after Spongebob who works with him, not doing his actual job. But now you may be thinking, why doesn't Mr. Krabs fire Squidward then for being too lazy? Well, I think Mr. Krabs knows about the agreement between yeah, Squidward and Spongebob's parents too. and is afraid to fire Squidward because then Spongebob, the Krusty Krabs' best employee, yeah, will have to leave with him. Yep. I also think ha, Mr. Krabs knows damn. that Spongebob is autistic and therefore keeps Spongebob employed so he can get tax benefits for having a disabled employee. So there Damn. you have it. That's my theory on why I think Spongebob is autistic and Squidward was hired by Spongebob's parents to look after Spongebob. Let me know if you believe this theory in the comments. And while you're there- Yo, I still think Squidward's trying to get with his grandma. I ain't gonna lie. That shit was kind of sus. The whole comic book shit, that was kind of crazy. 
<laughs> Let me know what you guys think down below. Your guys' thoughts and uh, theories on this shit. Uh, and yeah, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.